Yeah. Here's, here's, well, first of all, I'll tell you, the two of the Grateful Flow in the yeah. book, the fourth two in the book, you should try it when you're sitting in traffic. It's very soothing. So basically, all you do for 30 seconds is name things you are grateful for, and you want to stick with small ones better than big ones. Sure. Like, uh, you know, I'm grateful it was a sunny day today. I'm grateful right. uh, my car is gas in. I'm the grateful. gratitude list. Yeah. You say them nice and slow, and you try to feel your chest relaxing, almost melting as mm -hmm. you say them. And then for a second you stop saying them, you just feel the flow of gratefulness. Yeah. Without the words. Yeah. And um, if you're lucky, if you're attentive, you'll you'll feel yourself approached by an energy and it doesn't matter what you call it, that's very soothing and calming. It's the energy that says it's a good universe, things are okay. You're okay. Yeah, you, know, you kind of open your heart. Yes. You know, if you're a, like an angry guy like me, or an uh, anxious, uh, sort of worrying guy, you know, that the, the feeling of actually opening your heart is a little daunting. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit scary. It yeah. is. It, it, you, you, you literally feel like the vulnerability is a lot to deal with. Yes. Now, what we try to do with our patients is prepare them in advance. So... <laughs> what, you might cry? <laughs> what, what is it? Well, just to stick with this particular uh, scenario, you know, but, but here's the thing. Yeah. Um, there's a principle called unification. Unification says everything is connected. So if you work on your impulses to scream, threaten, um, go nuts, whatever you want, yeah. if you work on those impulses, we can talk a little more how to do it. That will carry over into other areas where your impulses are out of control. It may be ang anger, but it may be a different impulse. Mm -hmm. It may be the impulse to overeat, just as a, as a for instance. Yeah. It may be the uh, impulse, obviously, to drink. Right. Um, what, what's, what, but, you know, in tracking those impulses, you yeah. know, in the old school way, yeah. like, uh, you know, dealing with, you know, I'm a comedian, whatever, but, like, you know, I got a lot of anger issues, and I had substance abuse issues, and I have food issues. So, like, you know, from your experience, what is the source, you know, 90% of the time of, of, of anger or compulsive behavior or, or not being able to, uh, to stop that stuff? The, the addict, the addict personality, and the truth is in our society, which is, it's almost everybody. Sure, it's, it's designed that way. Capitalism needs it. Uh, yeah. You know, I, we, I think in the first book we had the thing about consumerism. Right, you can never feel whole. Yeah. It, it's a, like it's always every, something else. Too. Sure, every, the, every force of business, you know, through advertising and manipulation and salesmanship is designed to make you feel incomplete. Yes, that's mm -hmm. 100% right. Um, and, you know, we try to tell the truth about that in the book, which means the whole world's against you in this sense. The whole world is a challenge. The whole world pulls you away from yourself. And you can know that intellectually, but what the tools do is they, they give you an active way to say no to that. Transcend it. Tran thank you. Transcend. Right? Yeah. Do you, did you ever read Ernest Becker, <clears throat> The Denial yes. of Death? Yes. That book changed my life. Yeah. In that... You know, like, because what you're talking about when you talk about the God-sized hole or the void or the black sun, you know, in, in, a, in a selfish culture or just as uh, us being selfish animals with the ability to think, that there, the, I, I think what he sort of posits is that there's a, an almost primal need to feel connected to something bigger than you. Yes. Right? And, and that, you know, you know where you're not going to get around that. That, you know, the, the existential loneliness of not being able to engage that is too horrifying and terrifying and uh, depressing and, and ca could cause you a lot of problems. So once you accept that, and even if you do it involuntarily with, you know, football or a rock band or drugs or whatever the fuck you're trying to do, that you're going to have to you're going to have to reckon with that need. I just want to stop this interview right now and say something which is I'm so fucking impressed that you not only read that book, but that you understood it. Because that's one of the books I assign my patients. And basically what he's saying in the book is that you could reduce all human problems to the same issue, which is the denial of death. And mm -hmm. I find that very helpful. It's funny, you know, we're just we're dealing with that in the new book also because one of the things um, the therapy attempts to do I in terms of dealing with fear or transcending fear is to give you the sense that death is not permanent. And most of most of us, like for me, being in public or doing this kind of thing, yeah. scares the shit out of me. It's like a certain kind of a death. But the only thing that's going to die is my ego. Mm -hmm. So if you can <clears throat> accept and rush into death and process it properly, you've lost nothing except your ego. And you get, um, in return, um, 
a better connection, I guess, with something much bigger. To, to develop as a person, your mother's got to cut you loose and let yeah, you Yeah, think about head. this. Hmm. The, her cutting you loose yeah. has to be a narcissistic act for her. In other words, I'm bound or tied to this person for life or yeah. for longer. The person needs to be free of me. Mm -hmm. I sacrifice myself because it's part of my project. Mm -hmm. There's an interesting tool with that, you know, just as far as expressing yourself towards other people, where um, you, you either um, are angry, polemic, overbearing, or, mm -hmm. which is one possibility, we'll say that's category one. Yeah. Or category two, where you're passive, uh, withdrawn, uninvolved, mm -hmm. right? But you're, ver you're accepting and loving of the other person. Now, there's something good in each of those, but by themselves, just a tirade or rage or whatever is not so good. Mm -hmm. And uh, the opposite, just being blindly loving and accepting and passive is not so good. Mm -hmm. So what we tried to do was combine the two. Now, the way that you... You want to try this? Yeah. Okay, just close your eyes for a second. Just go to the rage part of you. Yeah. <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a, I have a river of that running at all times. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, there's foam coming down his mouth, for those of you who can't see it. <laughs> yeah. All right, now just kill that. Now go to the other extreme, complete, passive, acceptance, and lovingness. Yeah. Good. Now go back to the first one. Yeah. Now go back to the second one. Right. Now don't think. Hit them both at the same time. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> right. <laughs> But what, what did I just achieve? What did you just achieve? Yeah. You achieved the impossible. <laughs> In other words, flow. Flow is the combination of two opposites that don't naturally fit in the same space. Um, and logically, you can't, you can't, you know, that was the excluded middle in Aristotle. You can't squeeze them both together. But if you, if you alter your consciousness and you, you go into a flow state, then you can um, you can have the good parts of both of them simultaneously. Anything artistic, particularly anything that's original, has qualities of this.